Um, so I am going to sh share my screen right now, and you're going to have it pop up on your side in a moment. Um, what I do want to draw your attention to is just framing a bit of context. So the your Salesforce isn't going to change. Um, that is, unless you want to change the way it looks. So what they have is a new feature coming out, part of the Winter 16 release, and it's a final. Uh, it's a finally a long time coming an upgrade to the user interface of Salesforce, and they've nicknamed it Lightning. It is an optional op uh, optional user interface change. So you do not need to switch to it if you're not comfortable with it, or maybe you want to set up a test group of people inside your organization, or maybe some people decide to use it and other ones use a classic one. You have that full options, and you're not being headed down to any path. Um, the, the only thing to be concerned is if your organization does have some custom objects or some custom, uh, 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 say, uh, advanced coding that's been applied to your organization, that would be the only time that we'd exercise caution rushing quite into it um, because we want to make sure that everything would be compatible. Um, so just things to consider and food for thought. What you, most of you should have noticed in the past week or so, the login page has changed a bit. It is a bit more friendly looking. Um, but nothing really in that's going to change. So when I log into the Salesforce environment now, I'm going to log into what we have as a, a demo environment. And you're going to see it's the exact same look and feel. This should be pretty much the standard Salesforce experience that you're all familiar with. Uh, you have your home page, all of your tabs. For, for the administrators, when you go to the setup area, on the top left-hand side, you're going to notice, notice something called the Lightning Experience. And to learn more about the user interface, this is a kind of a one-stop shop, and it gives you the full rundown of what you can expect. Sometimes you do need to make a couple changes to your settings to make it compatible, and it just gives you a rundown of what needs to happen. It also gives you the option if you do want to enable it just as a test drive. For most people, this is going to be defaulted on, and they'll allow you to make that change. So from your home page, if you want to try out the Lightning Experience for yourself, you're going to click on your name, and it's going to say, Switch to Lightning Experience. I just want to pause to make sure that everybody sees that. You are going to go back to your home page, you're going to click on your name, and you're going to see the link that says, Switch to Lightning Experience. We're going to go ahead and click on that, and you're going to get uh, just a warning dialog. You're about to switch your user interface. Once again, this is not permanent, and you can always switch back to the previous user interface as many times as you want. This is also only changing it just for you. So myself that I'm logged in as Tyler is not changing David's experience. It's just for my own account. Later on, if you decide their whole organization is going to switch over, you can set up rules that would trigger that change for everybody. What happens is you have your initial loading page, but now when I log in, I'm presented with a fairly different screen that would be expected from the previous version of Salesforce. We're still on what we call our home page, but for any of you that use the Salesforce Mobile One app, you'll notice that it's actually pretty familiar. What they've done is they've kind of applied the same type of formatting and branding on the Salesforce One mobile app before they rolled it out to the desktop. So lots of the icons, a lot of the layout, a lot of the color schemes should be kind of familiar in that regard. And just at a glance, it actually looks like more like an app now, something that's a bit more in line with the way you would download off your iPad or Android. If we're just going to take this apart step by step, it's going to be laid out instead of along the top bar where you used to have your tabs before, you now have a vertical bar on the left-hand side. If I, uh, if I show you right here, you have all of these on the left. These are icons just similar to apps. They are your former tabs. Sorry about that. On the left-hand side, you can hit the three-line button, and that's going to expand out all of your tabs that you've seen before. So why don't we just take a second here and pause to see what that looks like. What you have is the same type of tabs you'd see before, home, opportunity, leads, tasks, accounts, contacts. These should be fairly familiar to you. What's a little bit different is if you have a couple custom tabs for your organization, so, um, the new Lightning Experience doesn't fully support those yet. 
So that will be one of the considerations if you have, say, a custom tab um, called invoices and it was made specifically for your organization, that can't be customized onto the, the layout for now. That's not to say those features don't exist anymore, but there's just not going to be a quick link for you to be able to see it. If you want to collapse it back or leave it open, that's up to you. You just have to click the three line expand. And as you see, the screen adjusts for you so you have a bit more screen real estate. Let's go into something that we're all a little bit familiar with, probably leads at the end of the day. When I've clicked on leads, I'm granted the same type of view before of I have a way to change what I'm looking at. Am I looking for recently viewed, open leads, today's leads, you know, the same type of filters that you'd have before. Let's take a look if we want to do a new lead. On the top right hand corner, you have a new button. When you click new, you're not taken necessarily to a new page, but you're more taken up to more of a screen that prevents you from leaving the, it doesn't force you to leave the old page to type in information. So this is more of a, I, I hate to say pop-up window, but more of a module pop-up that allows you to stay where you are and still type in the information. Uh, you also notice the font size and spacing is a bit more generous than the previous version of Salesforce. It's taken all the visual design cues that are part of the today's modern HTML and web design practices. So you still enter the information in the exact same way that you would before. You know, uh, your first name, last name, contact information, all of that is the exact same. Any specific fields to your organization would be the exact same as well. None of that has changed, it's just presenting the information in a slightly different format. If we hit cancel and we go look into one of our specific leads, let's take a look at Tyler Carlson right now. You're going to notice that it's just laid out once again, very different than it was before, but also in a bit cleaner format. There's a bit more spacing, information isn't pushed together as much. Along the top it tells you you're looking at a lead and this is a lead information. For those of you who use Chatter, you can just click the follow button and that will start following it on Chatter. Some of the company information along the top and then the email address. You also have this wonderful new flow bar that allows you to track the status over time. So before you'd have a pick list that you would pick one of these options. Is it open but not contacted? Is it closed or is it converted? Kind of now you would be able to see it go through the process. So if we were to change it from working and contacted, you would just mark it as its new current status and you kind of see the change happen as the workflow. You've already completed step one. This would also be similar for stages on the opportunity level. They'll automatically show out as well. If you wanted to log an activity, you have your activity bar right here. If you wanted to collaborate, you just move it over one and same for any specific details on the lead that are not presented already. You just scroll down and there's all of your information. It's a lot to process on an initial glance, but for those of you that are using apps in your day-to-day -day life, you may find that this is a bit easier to work with right off the top. You also have all the same related lists that you had before, like notes and attachment and approval history. Let's take a look at something that's uh, more on the contact basis. Once again, we're going to look at Bob Smith's testing company and like a contact profile card that you'd have in Outlook or in the previous version of Salesforce, they look pretty, they, they, they look in line with what you'd expect. To help do a side-by-side, -side, let's open it up so you can see what the old contact page would look like compared to the new one. So we'll go back into our Salesforce. We'll log in. And now it remembers, well, you're already in Lightning Experience before. Let's load you back into it again. If I decide I want to switch back, this is a good time to demo with it. You just click on your user profile in the top right-hand corner. Hit switch back to Salesforce Classic. So once again, the profile icon and switch to Salesforce Classic. Now we're back in here. We'll go to our Contacts tab and look up Bob Smith. Same type of information. These are all the same fields that have been preserved the exact same way and there's even an opportunity. If we're looking back at the new Lightning user interface, we're looking at Bob Smith. There are all the same details to be expected as before. 
under related, you see opportunities stand out a bit more. They're a bit higher on the page, they're less buried. You can click on it and it's going to take you straight to the opportunity. So it's just, once again, a change in the way that you're interacting with Salesforce. All the previous functions are still the same. That's not to say no, not any new features are coming down the pipeline as well. With a new user interface, they're going to be able to start rolling out more features um, at, because they're not limited to the constraints of the old system. The final area I want to cover uh, before we wrap up the section, uh, the section and move on to more of a question and answer period would be let's take a look at reports and dashboards. They're one of the more visual changes that have, cha um, have been changed part of the new environment. So let's take a look at one of our dashboards and it'll just be a moment for me to pull one up that I think makes best sense. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the lead dashboard that we have. As you see, your dashboards, they're a bit bigger now. They're not as uh, truncated as before. Um, we can customize it just like you would do on your regular dashboards to show what widgets appear where. And they're slightly different graphics, but it's the same type of idea at the end of the day. Let's go look at a different dashboard. We're going to go back to all dashboards, and we're going to scroll down until we find one that we want to open. Let's take a look at an opportunity dashboard. While the dashboard's loading, it's once again being the first time of the day uh, for, most, for most of these. And then there, there we go. So we have our similar leads by week, and it's being a line graph. We have our opportunities by stage, which is a horizontal bar graph. We have the standard gauge that's more for the needle point, and all the different information. You can still do your mouse overs to get more information, but once again, it's just presented in a much more visual manner. There are customizations that can be specific to the Salesforce Lightning experience. And from there, you can actually start to tweak it a bit more than you could in the previous version. Um, so uh, not everything is backwards compatible. So if you do create a report in the Lightning experience, it may not be fully compatible with the, uh, with the old one. I know it's a lot to cover, and I may have talked a bit quicker on there. Um, if there's any questions I can maybe field a bit earlier, please feel free to type them in the chat and let me see if I can answer them for you. Um, I did get one question. Uh, if you do enable the lightning in the setup, it, it does allow you to toggle between the two, uh, the two different user interfaces. That's correct. So you can enable it just for yourself or a select group of people. Um, and it is a toggle, so you're not going to be locked into it. You're not going to be able to say, um, I want to try it out, and then you can't go backwards. So you're going to be fine in that regards. Um, let's take a look at just how to do that once again quickly. So we'll go back to the classic Salesforce environment where most, most of you would be starting from. And you want to go to your setup. Once you're in your setup, you want to go back to your Lightning experience where it says New. It's a good chance for you to actually learn more about what it's offering. So you can either click Learn More and it's going to take you back to your uh, more of an information page. So do you want to do a bit of their learning modules? Do you want to see what it takes um, takes from basics to some of the features? And there's some challenges that you can do to help you get more familiar with it. To actually enable it, you do have to enable some of these features. Make sure that the bottom one is the most important. Do you want it turned on? Yes, I do. If you do want to set it for a select group of people, you would set it up under permissions. Salesforce has committed to at least the foreseeable future in their definition between three to five years to support the old way, so the previous user interface, the one that we're all still using more or less right now. There's no time right now that they've declared that they're going to force anybody to the new user interface. So all of that is... Uh, they're going to support both in tandem, and there's no, um, no plan to force anybody off it anytime soon. Uh, let me just take a look at some of these other questions that have come through, and I appreciate everybody participating. This has been a great help. Uh, so just be a second. I'm just kind of reading on a few of them right here. 
Uh, one of the questions was about some of the installed packages or apps that you may have installed on your onto your Salesforce environment and if it's going to be compatible or not. Um, what each app has been notified is they have to ensure that their, um, their apps and their installed packages are Lightning compatible. What a lot of vendors are now doing, if you look at the app reviews or the app information itself, it will tell you if it is Lightning compatible and if not, when the expected date for it should be. If it's an app that's no longer being maintained or part of a managed package, you may have to reach out to the vendor itself to find out what their plans are for it. One of the easier ways to do it is maybe a bit of a test and guess. Maybe on some offline hours you do turn on the Lightning experience and you try using it. Based upon my experience, I've worked with many of the different apps so far and I have not run into any issues, uh, compatibility issues with the Lightning experience. I think lots of it is, is just a big change that are taking a lot of people, uh, a lot of developers and a lot of app companies to make sure that all of their coding is up to standard but most of it's going to be backwards compatible by default. Um, good question to have. Um, let me see. I'm getting a lot of good questions right now. Um, I'm going to take some of these questions as I'll do my best to get back to you individually. I'll, rec uh, I'll cut and copy these questions down onto a notepad so I can get back to you. Um, there are going to be a lot of promotional videos coming out, so um, that's another thing I'll we'll try to draw your attention to. Um, Salesforce is doing a great job of making sure that this is impacting a lot of their users. So they want to make sure everybody is comfortable. They're providing a lot of support in that regard. Also, for any of you that have the, the premium support packages, um, you can also reach out to Salesforce and they can also help you with any questions and answers that you have. But all of you do have access to the help and support that is in the top right hand corner of your screen when you log in and there's a whole section de uh, dedicated to learning more about the information on um, how to use how to use a lightning experience. So with that being said I, I just want to thank you again on behalf of uh, David and myself and the AppSolve team for attending this seminar this webinar and getting the information um, we're going to do our best to answer all of your questions and if you do have any information or uh, thoughts you want to share with us, please do feel free to reach out at David and he'll do our best to, uh, to get back to you.